Good morning, guys. So today I'm going to be talking about cultural differences. We don't always just learn words in Spanish. Sometimes the point of our class is to learn that different places, Mexico in particular, do things differently. Today we're going to be talking about school in Mexico. All right, so school in Mexico and school in the United States are pretty similar. Uh, one thing that is different, though, is that preschool is mandatory. So that means at age four, let's see, page six, at age four, um, kids start school in Mexico. In the United States, particularly in Michigan, kids don't actually have to start till uh, first grade. So that is six years old. In Michigan, you don't have to start school until you're in sixth grade. In Mexico, you start when you're four, so a little bit earlier. All right, uh, next thing, page 11. The times. <clears throat> so in the United States, schools usually go from eight o'clock in the morning till three o'clock at night. Whoa, look over here. In Mexico, they have two sets of classes. You have your morning classes or your afternoon classes. You don't go to both. Some kids go to the morning classes and some kids go to the afternoon classes. So school's a lot shorter in Mexico. It starts at 7.30 normally. Not, not, not all schools start like that. Some schools start at eight, some schools start at seven, and they usually end about 12.30. Let's wait for the bells. So it's a lot less time. And then there's a break in between and a different group of kids come in. Usually the teacher stays there all day, but the kids switch out. Now, why is this? Oh, well, in Mexico, the sun is out a lot. The days are very long. Think of days in the summer that we have here in the United States. You know, the sun's rising at 6 o'clock and it's not setting till 9. So in Mexico, they have this period in the middle called the siesta. Most people, most stores, too, shut down for lunch. Nobody's buying anything from like 12 to 1. It's usually the hottest part of the day as well, so people don't like to walk around during that time. You go home, you eat, you take a nap, then you go back to work. Now, you work at work a lot longer. Like here in the United States, most people start going home at 5 o'clock. In Mexico, they'd be working till 7, 7.30 at night. But you go home for a pretty long time, sometimes as much as two hours. Now, this is changing. That's the way things used to be. This is changing. There are a lot more places that are open all the time. There are a lot more people who aren't taking the siestas, but the school's still set up this way. <gasps> I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be nice if you only went to school for, let's see, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12, five hours a day? Okay, moving on to number 44, page 44. Look at those little kids in little preschool outfits. So here we have the age groups. Oh, three years old. I really thought it was uh, four years old is when they start. So he, I guess, I don't think that's right. <laughs> um, maybe um, maybe if you're born, you're almost four, you can start preschool. All right. Similar classroom setups as you can might see. Everything's, oh, lots of windows. There's a lot of more sun. Page 44. Oh, these are some of the rural schools. So in some places, they don't have buildings. They don't. People are still living on the farm. Indigenous people, what you would call Native Americans, because Mexico is still an America. It is Central America. So the indigenous people will still be called Native Americans, what a lot of Americans call Indians, which doesn't make sense because they're not from India. All right, 44. We've got a long way to go. Let's start skimming through here. All right. So a lot of places, they don't have enough teachers in the rural areas. Uh, they're so spread out. There's a lot of jungle. There's a lot of forest. There's a lot of really rocky mountains. I think we have three still 
slightly active volcanoes. Um, so that makes terrain hard to get through. Uh, I've been through the mountains and literally the road is so close to a cliff that you could like, you look over and you could see just a cliff and mountains and you could see cars that have fallen off the cliff. So it's very difficult to get through. So they have telecommunications. What does that look like? Usually the students gather in a room with some adult. There will be a short video broadcast for 15 minutes explaining the assignment. And then the students have 45 minutes to get the assignment done on their paper or their notebook. Then there'll be another 15 minute video and the day will go on like that one for science, one for math, one for reading, and then one for English classes, learning English. And that's how their day goes. Uh, kind of like what we're doing right now. I am giving you a short video explaining it. There would usually be some paperwork afterwards that we'd give you. All right. Mandatory school. Now we're going up to 15. So that's different from the United States. In the United States, everyone goes to classes, even in the most rural places. Page 15, page 15. I would pause it, but this particular program uh, gets a little weird on the pausing uh, overshot. Okay. I did do that one. Never mind. So set 37 we go to. Sorry. Okay, so starting in sixth grade, we call it secundaria, which literally means the second set. We have elementary and upper elementary. In Mexico, they have secundaria. Now here is where things start getting tricky. You have to pay a fee called papeleria. That is the cost to go to school. Until sixth grade, you don't have to pay for anything. Well, I shouldn't say that. You still have to show up with your uh, clothes, your school uniforms. There's no lunch provided, but most kids go home at lunchtime, so it doesn't really matter. But starting in sixth grade, you got to start paying for school. It's 200 to 500. Actually, that's pretty old. It's probably about a thousand pesos, which would be like maybe 175 dollars per year. Now, this doesn't sound like a lot. Well, it sounds like a lot to you, but for parents, 150 dollars for the whole year is about what you pay for. I don't know if you took swimming lessons, or if you have uh, sports teams, you usually have to pay for those in the United States. Um, a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, about a third, one third, so there's three students. One of those students, one out of three students, do not go to sixth grade because they cannot pay the $150 for the supplies. Now, this is the school charging you. The school literally sent you a bill. You still have to then pay for your own supplies. You have to buy your own textbooks, workbooks, notebooks. That's usually another 160 pesos, another 50 bucks-ish. Uh, so a lot of people start dropping out. Now, this is a really weird one because you're not allowed to drop out. Just like in the United States, you have to go till a certain age. In Mexico, you have to go to ninth grade. And I might be zooming over to that page now. Telecommunication. I don't have a page for that. Okay, uh, so you're not allowed to drop out in sixth grade. Technically, the, the police are supposed to come look for you and ask you, why aren't you going to school? But a lot of kids in Mexico do not go past the sixth grade because their parents can't afford to buy the things. We're very lucky in the United States that uh, we try to pay for everything up until high school. Uh, you do have to pay for college. All right, fees, page 38, 39, one more page. 
All right. <clears throat> so also, fun little thing. In school, the secondary schools, what we will call sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, there are no lockers. Students carry their stuff. Uh, this is an important one for us. Students do not change classes in these schools. Instead, the teachers rotate. What I mean is you don't go to music class. The music teacher comes to you. You don't go to Spanish classroom. The Spanish teacher comes to you. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is this might have some similarities to us next year. Next year to prevent the spread of germs, you may not be moving from your classroom. I may be coming into your classroom. We'll still play our Kahoot game. I'll still do my guitar stuff, uh, but I'll be going into your classroom. Also, who knows? We may be doing some more telecommunication stuff like we're doing now. And we also may have some split classroom days, some days where you only come to school uh, half a day or you come on Monday, Wednesday. So I'm just trying to prepare you and tell you this is not that unusual. In some places in the world, this is the way it's always been. All righty. So again, today's lesson wasn't about Spanish words. Hablando Español, buenos días. It's more about the cultural aspects, how things are different around the world. They're not better. They're not worse. They're different. Today's highlights have been, number one, the shorter classes. Only five hours a day in Mexico. Number two, uh, they start a lot earlier. Preschool is mandatory in Mexico. Here, most Michigan's changing. A lot of kids go to kindergarten, but you don't technically have to in Michigan. Uh, the teachers move to the classrooms. And some stuff is done through videos. <clears throat> And of course, the sad one, in sixth grade, students have to start paying for stuff. And some people can't afford to pay for stuff, so some kids stop going to school. It's been lovely seeing you. Uh, remember, you can go back and watch any of the old videos, too. You did not understand 100% of what I was saying when I was speaking in Spanish in the other videos. I'm looking for more people to be participating in class. Oh, sorry. Duolingo. Use your Ferndale email accounts. I can see who's doing the work uh, that's going to be on the report cards coming up. I have 84 students out of my 420 students who have logged into Duolingo. I need to see more connections. Talk to you guys later. Bye.